Hello everyone, welcome back to some more, well I would literally say Borderlands 2, but today I haven't got enough time to record a Borderlands 2, work has been busting my balls as it were, and I just don't have time. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something I've been making, um, I've, I've put videos of this on, on it before, but this is like an actual, it's getting closer to the point where I can actually release it. Graphically it's still very not where it should be, um, as you can see it's very bare bones. Uh, but it's a game called Willie's Revenge 2. Uh, you might ask, what, where's number one? Number one was released in 19, like the late 1970s or like the late 1980s, and my dad helped to make a long, long time ago on an old British home computer that nobody remembers called the Dragon 32. Um, but I'm making a sequel to it, and uh, let's let's crack into it. So. Uh, there's no sound right now, uh, just in this scene. There is in other levels. Everything you see right now, again, is very bare bones of just like MS Paint art in an overworld and some level dots and some enemies and stuff. Um, but what is the game? It's not just Snake, obviously, because that's been done. It's Snake, it has enemies and it has levels. You still have to collect pellets. You still have to uh, get to the end. Right now, it doesn't matter about you driving over yourself. It could be a hard mode or something I do, but a lot of the levels are designed with you being able to go over yourself, so it wouldn't make much sense to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click. Okay, uh, so I'm back. Uh, the, the joys of game development. I just had a load of errors come up. Um, yeah, but I'm in the overworld, so I should be able to press start, as we can. Uh, all the sounds and everything you're about to hear were made by me. Uh, some of the art is made by an artist friend of mine, who I am paying to do some work, but it's still very early. It's not a final art or anything like that. So without further ado, let's begin a new adventure. Uh, also, this is placeholder. This used to look like this, but now it looks like this. Again, all music and everything made by me. Um, even this artwork, this art was made by me. I made this in Photoshop, uh, just some basic programmer art that gets the feel seen across this level. It's almost like a developer commentary that you're going to get from me. This level is supposed to teach you how to move, which is the arrow keys, just by you playing it, not by any text or anything. Um, also the concept of getting a golden pellet, and also the concept of reaching the goal. Uh, as you can see, the uh, snake works. I can do this. Not a crash, but if I hit any walls, it will reset me. So that's still part of the game. There are also enemies and moving obstacles and things you have to avoid. Um, which is important. There might be some loud sounds and things like that, so be careful of that. Also, there's a timer in the top screen. You might think, what's that about? Well, if I retry the level and go as quickly as I can, I need to go as quickly as possible. Well, in the top left, you can see a debug of me, how many completed and how many golden I've got. Like if I finish it in time and I go to the overworld, you'll see there's uh, now a golden pellet which has the symbols for the completion and the timer and the golden pellet in there and that's done so now I can go to the next one which is also a different map now and we can go to here this level is supposed to teach you oh yeah there's obstacles that are going to appear in the level there are keys that you can get that open locked doors uh, the synth sound is just a placeholder for now. Um, and this leads into this toy block looking area because the first world is called the toy block forest. This is the, like the flower field. Each level has a golden pellet that is usually harder to get, a time limit that you have to beat and well you don't have to do it for completion's sake but just to beat the game you don't have to do it but for everything else you do. This is like a fairly new addition so this is why this is still like grey but this lets you retry the level immediately, go to the overworld or if you don't want to go to the overworld you can just go straight to the next level. Um, again, all music, everything made by me. I would like feedback on it when I give it out to people to test. Uh, I'm, I'm going to like charge like two or three quid for this when it's done, because there's a hundred levels. Uh, the levels are fairly easy to begin with, but they get much harder. So we're going to go to the next level. And as you can see... Hopefully, if I program this right, when I get to level 6, the same version of the song with drums should come in. This, this guy is called Running Roger. The, all the enemies have very predictable and learnable patterns, 
Uh, they also have different colours that show what they do, but for people who are colourblind, you can also just know that the person with this shape always moves in horizontal lines from left to right. Sometimes at different speeds, but always from only left to right. And I thought that was okay. Uh, design. You can try and be inclusive as much as possible. Right, so now, you see the same song, but with uh, a drum beat now. The final five levels of every world have a drum beat because it's supposed to be more difficult, it's supposed to be ramping up in uh, in difficulty. So Running Roger is still going to go from left to right. This little bit here is a is just a shortcut for speed purposes. So we can get to the next level. And then this is this is a uh, called cool, I think it's called Around the Bend or uh, Super Highway or something like that. All the levels have names on the overworld. You can see what they're called. Obviously, you miss out on that if you uh, press next level. But for people who are speedrunning or people who just want to play through the whole game and get through the levels without going to the overworld every time, which I know I would be if I wanted to play the game, I, I thought I have to have a UI that lets you go back to the overworld or lets you go straight forward so you don't have to worry about it. You can go pretty fast in this game occasionally. Eventually, you start going pretty quick. Right, this is a uh, Bouncing Barry. Uh, they always have alliteration in their names too to match the colour that they are. So, Bouncing Barry, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you, is the same as Running Roger except they only move in vertical lines. So they always go up or down. Um, again, different speeds sometimes, but they always go only up and down at all times. So this is the f like the second to last level of World 1. And we're going to have some fun. I think there might be a problem with level 10, but that's fine because I can show you it while I do it. This is not only me showing gameplay, but also me showing you just general, like, development stuff. And why making games is really hard, or at least takes a long time. Because this isn't the most mechanically deep game of all time. But it does still take a lot of work. Right, so this is what I was going to say. This is appearing too early, so I'm going to close out here. Now you should see a level, a, a screen of the whole game, which is fine. Um, just to show you this, because I think it's interesting. It's saving every time you do this. So if I load the autosave, it will load all of these levels being completed up to 10. Uh, I can only load the manual save here, but if I loaded the autosave, it would load the correct one. So if I go to level 10 real quick, you can see this. The reason why this has come up early is just because this level update canvas needs to be alpha zero, which is over there. I, I know exactly what the problem is. So if I go to level 10 again, which I'm in, and then click start, I can start from here. In the main game, you can only start from the overworld. You always start the game from the overworld and you pick the level you want to go to. And then once you're in a level, you can go between that level and the next level. This level features both of the enemies. There was a bug for a long time where if enemies hit each other, uh, as in like if a blue enemy hit a blue enemy, the game would crash. They would just like completely lock up uh, because there was a boolean that was not set correctly and so it would loop forever. It would just loop internally for, for all time. Um, I'm also getting work emails. I'm not at work right now, but I still have to respond to emails occasionally. Uh, yeah, but this is the, the, the first sort of level I would say, this and level 9 are the first ones where we're starting to be a bit difficult. I've tried to go with the philosophy of every world to have its like, own little mini difficulty curve. So maybe level 11 isn't as hard as level 10, but uh, level 20 should be harder than level 10 was, if that makes sense. So in level 10, and each multiple of 10, you can only go here. Um, and there's a good reason for it. When I go to the overworld, you'll see this orb that says 7. Okay, I can't pass it because I've only got one clear according to this version of the game. But I can actually go in here and change it myself. Seven. Say I had seven completions, I go through here, it smashes the orb. Uh, there needs to be a smashing sound and stuff like that. But now we're in world two, and you see the next one needs 14. Every world, you need to beat seven of the, la of the previous world, or, you know, just 14 levels in total. That's fine. And you can get through these orbs. Um, if I zoom out to the scene view so you can see the whole scene, you can see the entire, I'm not going to play through the entire game, but you can see the whole world. Eventually this is going to be split up into many 
like Mario 3 style overworld maps with each of these different curves and elements and stuff. Um, each one has like, this is 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, etc. All the way up to 63. So to beat the entire game, or at least unlock the last world, you only have to get to level 63. Or, or beat 63 levels. Um, and that way, you can uh, progress like that. I think what I'm going to do is make it so that you have to go through the levels and clear each one to get to the next one. So you can't skip through all of world 10. You have to do each level individually in world 10. Um, but yes, so let's go to world 2, where I fear things might break, but that's that's completely fine. Let's save that because I changed the, the fix. There shouldn't be in an exit block ice. Let me just check this. Yeah, it, it won't know what the canvas and stuff is, but that's fine. I think the levels will still work. Okay, so here we are in world 2. This is the ice world. Every game needs an ice world. Uh, it's like an ice palace, so this way we've got like tiled floors and stuff rather than just ice and snow. These blocks mean you can't move. You can't hear me clacking my keyboard. I can't move up and down. So it, the, the, the entry vector that you put in is what you get out. You can't change it. So if you're going to careen into a wall, that's too bad. You, you just have to slide into the wall. And this is a teleporter. That teleport you to the next area. Every like two or three levels, I try to add a new, um, a new uh, mechanic. That's because of a, a thing I already know. So luckily, I've got a debug thing that lets me skip through levels and press N and go to the next level. Um, if you want to know the nitty gritty reason for why that didn't work, it's because there is a new sound manager that I'm working on, and uh, it's not implemented in every level yet. It's implemented in all the first world, but the the second world and onwards doesn't have it. And so, uh, it won't let me exit, but that's fine. You might notice this is a mirror of the other room in, in totality. It's not actually programmatically mirrored, it just looks like it is. You can tell by the uh, blue guys being desynced, the berries. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. I just like the world, so I try to be fair. Sometimes it's easier said than done. I'm going to count this as winning. So here we are in world uh, two, next level. These guys can also take the uh, the teleporters. So this level is about finding a way through them. And uh, you know, every so often I want the levels to like bear their fangs a bit and say, you know, we're not just going to give you the win for free. You've got to earn it. So there's a big gap here. We're going to use. I like to leave it a bit early because otherwise you catch up to the guys on the other path and you die. So that's fine. Now this one is a race between you and the guy at the front. You have to be quite decisive with your movements. If you take too long going backwards and forwards trying to line up a good hit, you're going to miss the, the boat, as it were. And the red guy, Roger, is going to get stuck at the exit. You might be able to see the exit. I crashed. It's fine. Uh, you might be able to see the exit. There's a port. There's a red portal, which is an exit to a teleporter, right in front of the exit. And if the Roger gets to the teleporter on the third line from his perspective, so he's going from the top to the bottom, if he gets to the end of the third line, then what happens is he gets stuck in front of the exit and you now can't win. But there's, there's been lots of iterations through where I've made levels easier, or thought, well, this isn't working. So that's going to count as a win. That's why I made levels easier. This one is a little bit confusing, but all you need to remember is where the dots are pointing to. The dots above and below the exits show you which one they go to, so you can quite easily learn and pick up just by looking at it which one you're going to go to. So you start here, for example. I know already I'm going to go to the second from the right because of the dot, the number one, black, black die pit. Two, and then three in the middle, and then four on the right. All the time I'm getting faster. Now, some levels require you. That, that wouldn't count as a win, so I'm going to actually do it again. Um, some levels require you to get all of the pellets. For example, to get the golden pellet, you always need to get every pellet in the level. But 
an example for this level. There's nothing stopping me from exiting. So I thought that was a, a, a nice little difficulty thing you could put on yourself. If you want to have an easier time by making yourself slower, some obstacles will be harder because you need to be quick to get past them. But this, for example, is a lot easier slow. So if I only wanted to beat the level, which I just did, you could get to the end of the level very easily. Again, these are all... Um, you can't move blocks. So this is a challenge of you just need to press the button. I, I also wanted to test different things. Like This is like a reflex skill. So you're trying to press the button at the right time to get the right trajectory to not hit into the wall. If you go too early, you hit the corner. If you go too late, you uh, hit the wall, which I just did. Because you can't turn on these ice blocks. I, I toyed with the idea of having like a slide, but it's, it's kind of hard to do, and not only is it hard to do, but it kind of defeats the point of um, like this grid, this very specific movement that I have, where the, the snake willy moves in like pixels per second, and it's always the same. So you can learn it, which is the idea. Um, that is me having a bad hitbox. That will be fixed because I'm uh, reworking the way the hitboxes work. Um, no one wants to die to a shitty hitbox, so that's that's something I'm working on. But there's lots of things I'm still working on. I'm hoping to get it done within another year. It's my idea. But all the levels are actually done already. They just need to fix them, make them work better. And so you can see we're back on the drum version of the song. This is a block that breaks after you walk over it one time. So, I'm going to show you the golden path for this level because I think it's interesting. I'm purposefully leaving myself with a, a way to get back to that teleporter on the right, on the left hand side, sorry. Um, because you need to get these, like, if you see those those gates in front of the exit, and when it goes, when that happens, that's on a level that you have to get all the pellets just to win, which is not often. Well, I'd say it's not often, but probably about 60% of the time you need to get all of them. And on the harder levels, you don't absolutely have to get them. It depends on what I think is easy or hard. But again, when I send this to testing and people test it for me, they might tell me, they might think, oh, level 12 is a bit hard, or level 15 is a bit easy, or whatever. So I might be able to fix that. The blackness is a, is a sprite replacement. There will eventually be a hole that looks good, but for now it's just a black hole. Um, and that just, you just kills you if you touch it. Right, so we can see that the exit is going to... like The way you go into the portal is the way you come out of it. So if you go in from the top to the bottom, you're going to come out of the red one from the bottom and then instantly die. So you need to go in from the right, or from the left in this case. So I'm going to go in like this, and it's going to put me out in the right spot. And then I can just cruise to the exit, which is going to kill me, but that's fine. Right, so now we... Again, also I introduce concepts and then I try, pretty much instantly, to take them to what I consider to be their logical conclusion. Oh, now we've got a, so for example, oh, my brain is how my development process works. Like, oh, I just made a uh, block that destroys after one use. How can I make a level solely on that mechanic? Oh, there I missed the uh, pellet. So I'm dead, because you have to get all the pellets in this level. Yeah, what, what mechanic can I use to utilize these immediately now that I've made this level? So this time I'm going to go like down here. Right, then get in here. I just like how it goes faster too, that's just fun. Right, so I'm going to count this as a win. For the exit, the golden pellet's just here. I think, now that I've just seen this, I could actually put the golden pellet over here. Because you can clearly get to it again and then come back again. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to put the golden pellet there. In fact, I'll do that right now while I'm thinking about it because otherwise I'll forget to do it. So let's uh, close the game real quick and I'll show you how this works. So the golden pellet is just like an object on the left hand side of the screen. I probably I should put it back in full screen mode, Joey, of the future, who has to edit this. So um, the golden pellet is just an object that exists. Like with most things in Unity, you just you just make an object for it. Um, so it's called the golden pellet object. And what happens is it checks how many of the pickup objects exist in the level. And if it's zero, then it spawns this golden one. So I'm going to put this golden one like over here. 
because the golden pellet uh, should probably should do it a bit different. I should put it here. I should change the spawn position only. Yeah, I'm going to change the spawn position over here because we know now that we can actually get it here and back again. So that's good. I'm going to save that. That's an on-the-fly change that I've just made seeing that it works. Okay, so now we're going to put it at level 19. And I'm just going to play for like half an hour, show you like the first three worlds or something like that. Okay, I think that if you tried to just beat the game, it would probably be two or three hours, probably. Um, maybe a bit longer, because some of the levels do get pretty hard. So I'm imagining it might take a bit longer. If you want to super clear everything, like 100% it, I, I, I've done it in six hours, but I made the game. So it's not very impressive. Um... So I think it would probably take about six, six to eight hours, I would imagine. But I'm trying to charge a price that I think is fair, which is like two dollars or three dollars. But then all the art will be much nicer looking than this, and there's going to be animations and other stuff I've got to do and pay people to do. But all the programming is essentially me and my friend that we helped work on it together. Right, so that's done. So now the final level of this world. It looks, this kind of looks like a Christmas tree to me, or like a weird fish. I don't know why. It's not necessarily supposed to be like a winter world, it's just supposed to be ice. Like an ice... Glacial palace sort of area. The the gradient makes it look like it's underwater, but it isn't. We'll have nice backgrounds too. I'm hoping that the music just isn't abhorrent. As long as it's not un unlistenable, then I'm okay with it. This one's a bit hard, I guess you gotta kinda go with the flow. It also loops, so there's no problem there. Right, this is the hard one. There we go. Sneak through there, now I'll be the end of the level. Right, okay, so that's done. Right, on to world three. This is one of my favourite songs that I've made. I really like it. The current, this sand, pushes you, and uh, you can't go against it. However, the level this the reason this level exists is to show you that if you have enough speed, you can fight against the current. You can see all the tail edges bunch up together because he's trying to get away. Okay, so that's considered done. So now we have this. It's like the it's like a sand speedway. You just go very quick. Most of the time challenges revolve around you trying to do everything in one go. So this one's 13 seconds to clear it in the time challenge, which has already gone past. You just have to do all of it in one loop and then loop around again and get to here again quickly enough. So that's done. The exit hitboxes are quite generous because I don't want you to skip the exit by like a pixel and then die because that would be quite annoying. Right, so that probably wouldn't have counted but this definitely would. Okay. So now this is yielding Yasmin, finding a name that began with Y and an adjective for that Y was quite hard. Um, Yasmin is a character that moves in any direction she wants, but only in straight lines. So this moves, for example, these ones move in a diamond shape, only in straight lines. You see how they're bouncing. It looks like they're bouncing off the walls. Okay. You see here, we've got the same sort of situation. This one's bouncing off the walls in straight lines. And then these ones are bouncing off the walls. I, I wanted to make it look like they're bouncing. They aren't actually bouncing off the walls. They're just going to waypoints in the middle of the screen that tell them where to go. But it looks like they are. So the average player looks like it. And I made these like warning signs to show you where you can go and where they can't go. Like these ones to show the point. These are still moving in straight lines, but they aren't bouncing off of walls. They just have to move straight. Right, so we're going to follow this one over here and beat that level like that. We're ready to level 26, aren't we? That's, that was quick. But like I said, the difficulty curve of each world should be its own thing. We're introducing you to concepts. I like that little... Uh, you, you have to slow yourself down to avoid careening into the guys. You can t you can do it all in one go. I might try. Um, but it is cool. 
But that's all I want to do. I just want to make a game that people don't hate. I'm fine with it not being the best game of all time. I don't want to win any awards. I just want like, people to like to be like, oh, this is alright. It's fun. It's my kind of fun, anyway. This level is probably the second hardest level in the world. Not in the game, but in this world. We're mixing a few kinds of enemies now. There's a specific way you want to do it. The, uh, I'm trying to work on conveyance on this level. It's a bit messy. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a path like, overlaid on the level where the enemies go. So you see exactly, rather than these dots which are showing the walls that enemies go past, which I thought was an okay solution for now, I'm going to put a um, like an overlay of exactly where they go. Like this trail, but much longer. So you can see, oh, they always go here. They they move totally this way. So we can see that, basically. That's my idea, anyway. So, for example, these two blocks are always safe. These two blocks are always safe. These two blocks are always safe. Because there's no dots next to them. That's the plan, anyway. Just gotta concentrate a second. I know I shouldn't be trying so hard a game I made, but that's fine. Right, so we can see this place is all. I, I crashed into the wall. <laughs> this place is all unsafe on the left hand side. So what you gotta do is you've gotta, similar to like this way, you've gotta follow one of them down and get there before the next one comes to attack you. By the way, to fix the hitboxes, what I'm doing is changing the way the collisions work entirely. Right now they work on edge colliders, but what I'm going to do is make the tile maps themselves uh, actual collisions, so the tiles know exactly how big they are. And so um, that the, the, the idea would be that if at any point along this straight line I'm moving, if I'm safe at any point down the line, I'll be safe all the way down the line, rather than what happens sometimes where like the pixels are shifting very slightly towards the left or right, and that means that what happens is Sometimes you're safe, and then for seemingly no reason, you'll become not safe, and there's nothing to tell you why that is, which I don't think is very fun. I'm just trying to avoid... I don't mind the game being hard. I don't even mind the game being unfair, necessarily, uh, but I want it to be consistent. I just don't want you to feel like, as a player, that you're being screwed over by something that was out of your control. Like, this guy's... This uh, spinner's fun. It goes in. It goes in um, a spiral, which I thought was quite cool. Yeah. So that's that's hard. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to change tact because there is a better way of doing it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here first. And this is a this is a lesson that even me playing the game, I always have to relearn it when I play the level again. Is that this doesn't work. Yeah, so I need to go back up. I need to follow this guy up again. And then someone's going to come and go up. But that's fine, because I can get over here. Then I can go down here, which is safe. And I can go up here, which is safe. And then go down here, which is safe. Yeah. And I just need to follow one of them down again. Which I can do, like this. And so long as I can do this without crashing into the wall, easier said than done, when you're much faster than you were before even spawns the golden pellet right on top of you if you do it like that. And I beat the level. Okay, good. Yeah, but I'm going to show, I'm going to show the first three worlds. There are 100 levels. So think of this, but 70 more, <laughs> 70 more levels on top of this. You could probably extrapolate how long it would take to beat from this. Like, say if it was, okay. So if I played at this speed the whole time, and it took me 30 minutes to beat three worlds, it would take me about an hour and a half to beat the game, or two hours, but that's if you don't make many mistakes, and the later levels are not only harder but also longer. Um, don't fret though, most of these levels are less than a minute long, if you have a good run, and even the biggest one, the biggest level is like three minutes long, the, the longest level in the entire game. So we're going for like small, compact experiences rather than like a massive monolithic sort of open world sort of thing 
This is like hearkening back to the games of old. I did die, so I'm going to do it again. But just between you and me, we both know that I just won. I did just... But that's no excuse. If you hit the wall, that's too bad. It's going to practice. Must try harder. But yeah, I, I don't mind making games that even I'm not even that very good at. Like, it, it's okay. There are people... That's kind of my hope, is that there'll be some people who just, like, blitz the shit out of it. They can just, like, beat every level in an hour, and then I want to see how fast people can do it, and then find exploits. Because I've thought about that, too. What, what do I do if someone finds a glitch, like, for speedrunning that isn't intended by me? Do I patch it out? I think what I would do is I would patch it out, but I'd make a separate, like, Steam... You know, like, Steam has beta versions you can opt into? I would have a version of the game you can opt into called speedrunner mode, which is just the 1.0 version of the game that no, that never gets any patches outside of ones that like break the game. Things like crashes and stuff. I'd patch out the crashes, but for things other than that, I think I'd leave it. And so the speedrunners could have their mode where they can say, oh, well, did we use this version of the game because it has, uh, I don't know, uh, sand percent speedruns where you there's a glitch in level 33 that you can use to break, or level 27 that you can use to break out of the sand and then somehow get to level 99. I don't know. Maybe there's some remote execution you can do. I don't know. Um, so if they find that, I'm not going to patch it out. I'll leave it. I'll patch it out in the, the retail version because I want people to play the game in the most stable form it can be in. But I don't want to uh, stop speedrunners from having fun either. If their version of fun is breaking the game, that's fine. Also, just in case you want to know, because some people care, and the, my art friend who makes all my art uh, does care, you can use WASD to move as well. Why you would ever play this game with WASD, I don't know. You have to be some kind of lunatic, but that's fine. Um, I, I, it's programmed in. You can use the WASD keys instead. I think I could put it... like This could work on console too. I don't think it would work on mobile, because you haven't got the tactile nature of the arrow keys to press left and right quickly enough. Ah, nearly. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, it's just uh, you don't have enough uh, speed to be able to do that quickly enough. I would, I would imagine. That's my idea, anyway. So that's that's probably not going to happen. Although it looks like a mobile game, so it could work well on there. But I just don't. I wouldn't want to make the game that kind of game where you have, you know, it's free, but every level you have to watch an advert. It just, it just doesn't sit with me. I just don't like it. There we go. Done. Right, this level is called Abrasive Affection, um, because the symbols are X and O. That's a, it's a, just a funny joke, haha. <laughs> Um, these guys snake up and down the, uh, the path. They bounce, they essentially bounce off of walls. So you have to like dip and dive in between them. This is probably the by far the most difficult level of the world to me. It's quite close quarters. You have to play in a certain way. Uh, but uh, this is a substantially easier version than the one that was originally in the game. What made it harder? Um, these Yasmins not only went quicker before, they went as fast as the ones on the right hand side do, um, but they also crossed over, which they don't now. This, the one on the left stays on the left and the one on the right stays on the right, but on the previous version they both crossed over, which made it way more difficult. It could be an incentive, like this is the sort of thing where if the game was popular, not even enough, just to buy a bit. I'd probably make like a hard type, where I just put all the levels that were hard back in. Because I've still got them. Um, I, I just make all the levels the hardest version of themselves they can be. Without being ridiculous. And call it like hard type. And it's just, it's just the hardest version of the game. For bragging rights or whatever. I could even make it so, oh, if you go over yourself, you die. But the reason, like, for example, here, that would make the level impossible. Because you're, in, you're going into a one-tile gap and you can't go in without coming back out the same way you went in. 
So there is, it's not a design flaw, it's just I'd have to change the way the levels were designed to make that work. For example, you might be able to, um, you might have like a timer, oh, you can walk on yourself for about half a second, but if you do any more than that, then you, then you die or something. That's just spitballing, it's probably not a good idea, but that, that kind of thing. Right, so I'm, I'm free of the menace, I've just got to escape. Right, now we're into the actual hard part. I'm only joking. This isn't the hard part. The uh, the X is the hard part. The O is the bit where you choke. You make a bad move. And then you have to go again. Because there are no checkpoints. In any of the levels, you have to do it yourself. Alright, I should be fine now, but I could still die. Like these, these berries are... Aggro, they move pretty quick. And they move fast. That's like that. So I, I would have won then. Good. And finally, level 30. I'm not going to show you level 31. That's for the full version that you can but No, you can just go on itch.io and um, play a version that has all the 100 levels in it if you want to. It won't have any of the music or stuff, but there is a version on itch.io that exists. If you go on itch.io and search for Willy's Revenge 2, you can. Uh, Pay nothing. It says name your price, just put zero in, that's fine. I wouldn't want to charge anything for something that isn't finished. Um, you uh, you put in zero, and then you can play the level that has a hundred versions. Or hundred, or the version has a hundred levels in it. Um, which all are mechanically pretty much where I want them. There are some things I have to change, but it pretty much works. So that's good. I keep doing the same thing over and over again. Expecting different results. I need to go up the top here. You're safe if you go up the top. Yeah. And then you're safe again if you go down the bottom straight away. Because you get there before the yellow guy catches up with you. Like that. Okay. There's some hot tips for you. Right, now this bit, this bit's Choke City as well. So what you do is you wait until this guy starts going down so you can follow him. Then you get in the, you get in this corner, because this corner's safe, and then you peg it after that. That's my top tip for that level. I know I would have won then. So, that's the end of that. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time with Borderlands, which I will be able to do by tomorrow. Sorry about that again. Goodbye.